This week on the Computer Chronicles, sports simulation software. We'll show you how to improve your skiing without getting cold. Tony La Russa is back with a great baseball simulation game. Like fishing, you can cast for bass with the CD-ROM. And for realistic gameplay, you can't beat this new basketball game called NBA Full Court Press. Plus, a look at how trainers are using computers to work with Olympic athletes and the secret behind good sports sim programming. All this and Dials Online, this week's news, my pick of the week, all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside, the business magazine for the technology elite. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Well, it's every guy's fantasy to put on the cleats or the pads and get out there and win the big one as a professional athlete. Unfortunately, we can't all do that. But these days, you can get pretty close thanks to computers and sports software. Now, sometimes you just get to play a simulated game. In other cases, you can actually learn to master the intricacies of a sport. In that latter category is a very nifty new program called the Interactive Guide to Skiing. And you put this whole thing together, Bill. Let me, let me ask you, skiing seems like such a physical, tactile, got to be there sport. Can you really learn stuff sitting in a chair watching a computer screen? Uh, the computer is a great education tool. Uh, we find that utilizing not only text, but video and audio and multimedia, that it makes a great learning platform. All right, let's take a look at what we could Thank do you. here. So we got a skiing program up here. And so I can just pick, uh, say I'm an intermediate, so I'd go to chapter three? Right. You're intermediate, you go to chapter three, and then here you have a list of topics. Okay, so let's say turns. I want to work on my turns. All right, turns. we'll go to modern turns. And in here, we've actually taken the turn, which is, uh, happens in a few seconds, and broke it down to each element and step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. So here, when you get, take the lesson, you have on the left a text box. And that kind of introduces you to the lesson and tells you what we're going to cover. So I can read what it is I ought to do. Now can I watch somebody do it right? Is That's that correct. You come over to our video text box, and uh, you hit the play button. Okay. The most important thing about a good parallel turn is the start of the turn, which is also so I got my little as private instructor game. sitting here inside. Well, That's I'm correct. See, huh? And then you can, if you want to study it a little more, you can hit the step button. It actually freeze frames it. And then by continuing to click on this button, you advance frame by frame. So that gives you a chance to actually study the video. You can hit rewind. You can play it over and over. And really and over see again. what each part of the body is supposed to be That's doing. That's correct. Now, one thing I found very helpful in this is you have actually little kind of robot animations that really focus on, on what the body is supposed to be doing at each moment. Can we yeah. take a look at one sure. of those? Sure. We can use our uh, nonlinear index to scroll through our lessons. We have actually have 95 actual screens mm -hmm. with 51 video lessons. And we're going to go down to one of our fundamental lessons called rotary movements. And in this section, we can watch our robot show you rotary. Rotary movements refer to the movements necessary to initiate and redirect your skis yes, to a really turn. That's really cool because you can see the Both knees, the ankles, the wrists, exactly yes, what you're that's doing. Correct. Right here, your skis yeah, you, you can see the hip movement, the knee movement, the angulation. The edges of the skis going in there. Right, and we brought in our arrows to help show you where the actual movement is. Okay, in addition to the skiing program, you have one for snowboarding. Now, that's the hot new thing everybody wants to do up on the, on the mountainside mm -hmm. here. So let's take a look at the snowboarding program Alrighty. and see what I could learn, because that's, that's all new to me. Okay, right here again, we have the broken program broken down into chapters. So let's say you're an expert rider. Let's okay, expert. just for the fun we can of it. select this chapter. And once here, you'll have a selection of each lesson that you want to take. Right here. So we can either select a lesson or we can just go ahead oh, and let's just take, take a look at what this is like. Yeah. And each lesson has a little intro for us. And it gets me in the mood to uh, take the risks here of doing snowboarding. Right? That's correct. So it is cool stuff. Now that you're an expert rider, we're going to talk about primary skills and how that affects the expert riding. All right, the so you're focusing on the expert here. Down. Suppose I'm a total beginner. I just want to get a little preparation before I go out there the first time. Okay. Well, we actually have a section in here which is called the Never Ever's mm -hmm. Guide. And right here we, in this section, we cover uh, the very beginning lessons. So this is really baby stuff, so I don't want to uh, embarrass myself well, when I go out there. Well, it's going to teach you how to put that board on, and it's going so to like teach you. So like standing up, all the, all the basics here, how to get on the correct. chairlift and all that stuff. Right there. So I actually have videos there too, huh? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so snow skiing, snowboarding, we can figure it out right here. That's Just correct. take a laptop up to the slopes with me. There you go. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right, while a program like this may help you figure out how to ski or snowboard for fun, some folks are actually using computers to train Olympic athletes. One amazing example is the bobsled simulator we found at the University of California at Davis. It's a sport for those who like speed. At the Olympic Park in Alberta, Canada, bullet-shaped sleds hurtle through a tunnel of ice at 80 miles per hour, and it's over in a flash. Most runs take about a minute to complete, so it isn't surprising that winners are decided by hundredths of seconds. Olympic bobsled drivers can now turn to a simulator to help shave those tiny fractions of time from their runs. The University of California at Davis has a bobsled simulator that provides picture, sound, and movement inside a bright blue capsule that doesn't need ice or gravity. One of the advantages of, ha of a simulator over the actual event is that you know everything that happens. You know how the driver steered, where the sled went in response to that steering, and those are essentially the, the items we are able to to give um, quantitative feedback to the driver about. We can tell him what his velocity was at all points on the track, how it compares, for example, to the best velocity that's been achieved by any driver on this track. To maintain realistic visuals, the program redraws each image 30 times a second. Once a driver completes a run, he can examine graphs to compare his run with other drivers. The bobsled simulator does not account for many uncontrollable factors such as weather and variations in push strength, but it seems to have proven itself already with a novice driver. He uh, had sort of stalled out in reducing his time, and we looked, he looked, and I helped him to look at his uh, steering and the uh, graph of his velocity difference, and we decided that he should steer a little bit earlier and more in turn 12, he tried it, and the very next uh, one minute later, he'd broken his time by 15 hundredths of a second, which is a very large amount in terms of a gradual decrease. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Well, good baseball sims have been around for a long time, going back to the first Earl Weaver baseball about 10 years ago, but they keep on getting better and more realistic, and probably the best of the lot now is the new Tony La Russa baseball version 3. And what's new, what's, what's, what's different about the version 3 of Tony La Russa? Well, there are a lot of changes. As we look at it, there are a lot of speed increases as the new machines have been more powerful mm -hmm. and allow us to do new things. When we go in here for an exhibition game, we'll be able to look and see uh, one of the key features, which is head-to-head -head stats. So we'll bring Atlanta... So how does one batter do against a particular pitcher? Exactly. Sort of so we'll bring up Atlanta against New York. We're going to have Mel Allen yeah, do the play-by-play, -play, sure. which will be a pleasure. We're also going to do one heretical thing here. We're going to take a Yankee Braves game, and we're going to move it to Boston and look at it. put the World Series in front of the Green Monster? That's right. We'll put it in Fenway Park okay. and make things interesting here. Lots of options in here. Lots of control options help you even the playing field mm -hmm. with your son or daughter who may be better at video games <laughs> than you are. Okay. So again, you can manage or play, handle the action, handle the batting or pitching, or just go against the computer as a manager. Exactly. Any of those options. Okay. So you're in manager mode right so now. So here we are now, and we're going to look. We're about to start our game, but very quickly we'll look. Head to heads. To see, our, to see our head to head. So here's Paul O'Neill against Steve Avery. He's one for five, batting 200. Not going to count a lot on O'Neill against Avery. No. We can go up and look at Tom Glavin. Less against Glavin. Against Glavin, he's one for 20, so we're not right. doing better here. Right. But this is the way that Major League managers actually prepare for an actual game. They're not looking at the same sure. stats that you or I look at. They're looking at the head-to-heads. What are the matchups yeah. today? Okay, can we get to the real game now and see what the action We're going like? to have it coming up here in a moment as we do our load. Um, also, I'll mention about the fact that Mel Allen, doing yeah. the play-by-play, -play, recognized the fact that this was a way that he could be, in effect, immortal That's great. in That's baseball, right. calling games into the future. Yeah, now, you're almost immortal. You've been doing this baseball <laughs> programming stuff for, what, 25 years, you said? Since 1971 on PDP-10 mainframes. So you are Mr. Baseball Code, huh? Well, I was in the right place at the right time. <laughs> a young guy who uh, loved baseball and got exposed to computers. All right, now, Tony La Russa's name is on this. Does he actually get involved in designing the game? Very much so. Tony is continually involved in the design over the overall strategy and of the management right, here's the game. Well. So show us what the action looks like. Okay. In fact, Mel Allen is going to set the game up for us here. 
with a humidity reading of 50%. The when we're talking about weather, that's because humidity, the temperature, all these the things, that affects how the ball flies. And so you have to look so at that's that. that's really built into the algorithm. Here. The physics are modeling because you get a humid day with a lot of fog, the ball is going to die at the warning track. Carry, huh? All right, so show us what this looks like now. All right, we've got the Braves and the Yankees Grounded. here. And the throw to first. As you got can him. see now, because I'm managing, I'm not controlling this action. That's because I'm afraid to do relax. action while I talk to you. You don't want to lose time. in front of a lot of people. That's right. But uh, the if a situation pitch. comes up, I can then intervene as manager. Oh boy, we're going to have a home run here. That it's sign up gone. on the green monster means that that puppy is out of here. Okay. And of course, we get the scoreboard the animation there. recreating that. So very quickly, it's going to be one nothing here. That's a solo well, who, who are you left. managing here? The, 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 Atlanta, I'm managing the Braves. Um, they, go. they have to bat. Now right. coming up, so uh, already, as you can see, well. under my management, they've already <laughs> taken a one to nothing lead. So, uh, so Dave Justice against Sterling Hitchcock. Now, one thing you'll notice here is we're only getting one pitch per batter. This is one of our innovations for managing. You can put it in one pitch mode. It makes yeah. it go faster. Don, thanks a lot. Well, what do you think is the most popular category of sports simulation software? You may be surprised to find out it is fishing software. And the leader of the pack in that category is a very cool program called Trophy Bass. And Randy, you're a fisherman today. How in the world do I go fishing inside my computer? Well, you just grab the mouse and go. The computer will walk you through the rest. Just like my rod and reel there? That's right. All right, so what do we do here? How do I actually catch a fish here? There's two ways that you can play. We can play against the computer, or you can play against other people. When you say play against the computer, this is like a competitive game. Who catches the most fish? Definitely. How it's not just me catch? and the fish. No, it's you against the fish, and then you against other people as well. Okay. You can play against with using a modem. You can play using the network in the local area network, mm -hmm. or you can play on the internet if you have an internet service provider. Let's go ahead and catch a fish. Yeah, let's go. Let's go do some fishing here. So first thing I decide where to go fishing. That's right. We have ten lakes in the game. Um, all of them are simulated after the actual lakes. As so these are real lakes, just kind of like real ballparks, and that's going to affect how the game's going to be played. Very definitely. You work. need to know what kind of area that you're in and what kind of uh, characteristics okay. of those lakes work out. So we're going to Lake Mead in Nevada. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose a clear day in the spring. And does the weather actually matter and affect what's... certainly matters. It affects the fish quite a bit, the time of year also. Again, so just like the baseball, I mean, this really affects the gameplay. That's definitely true. It'll decide where the fish are going to be, uh -huh. what type of patterns that they're going to be hitting. Okay, so we got the weather set, we got the lake set. What do we do now? You look at a topographic map because depending on the time of year, the fish will be in different locations. And how this, deep the water is at different places. That's correct. So I can not only pick the lake, but now pick what part in the lake to sort of take my boat to? That's right. And as soon as you zero in just a little bit, we put you in the boat where you can drive around on the lake and uh, check the depth sounder up wow. here. So when you drive in the depths around, around, you find the kind of location that you want and see if you can find some fish. All right, let's go park and, and uh, do some fishing here. All right, so that's me at the bottom in my boat. This is, go ahead. Then this is uh, the fish oh, swimming so around on the screen. Little fish there. You so can I see know, fish from the So I know where to want. cast, huh? That's right. And on an easy, we have an easy, medium, and hard mode. Weed so easy? Weed easy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's different ways you can cast, right? That's right. Five different ways that you can cast. There's 24 different rods, um, and uh, and what do you do to actually try to try to catch the fish now? I mean, you sort of you have to select it. Just like a strategy game, uh -huh. you have to select select the right so lure. So using the right equipment and the right lure for that kind of fish in those conditions. That's right. Out of 240 different lures, you have to choose the right rod, the right lure, uh -huh. the right type of technique for the right. And again, it's like baseball where you're managing it here, or does it, you really need good eye-hand coordination to do you're the You're doing the real part. thing. Once you get it out there, you have to tease the fish into striking, and once you strike, there's more of an arcade Oh, so you really aspect. have to pull the lure through the water and, and entice right. the fish in and so on. Then if you get stumped, you can also click on a little uh, yeah, lure here, yeah, get a tip from one of our top pros. We have four different fishing pros that will give you over 75 different tips and the different types of locations and water that you're fishing. So if I get stuck, I can call up one of your experts and say, what do I do in a situation like this? At any time you want. They're here in the boat for you all the time. Well, that's amazing. Okay. Trophy Bass, thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, how do you get a sports sim program to accurately represent the action of real athletes? Well, you take those real athletes and you essentially digitize them. That's the business of a company called BioVision here in San Francisco. This 1988 version of John Madden football with its jerky graphics and block letters looks prehistoric compared to the latest generation of Madden NFL 97, featuring elaborate animation and realistic graphics. Part of the reason for that jump in quality 
is the use of motion capture, a way of transposing the movements of live players onto animated figures. We'll hire somebody from the NFL. Uh, we have a former Heisman Trophy winner right now recording. What we do is we hook them up with, uh, they look like ping pong balls, and we run them through these, um, this infrared motion capture system. And uh, depending on the platform, uh, we end up taking that information and processing it out and um, you end up getting little sprites or little men, whether they're sprites or polygon players or whatever, running around with the exact same motion attributes that this player runs around with in the NFL. Here we go. One, two, three, go. At this recording session, Heisman winner Andre Ware follows a script of specific moves that will be repeated in the game. Cameras capture a 3D image of his movements from reflectors taped to key joints on his body. Back at Electronic Arts, a skeleton is built over the moving points, and the skeleton's moves become the player's moves on screen. Madden NFL depends on 3D simulation for realism, but the game uses other programming tricks to make it challenging and competitive. The key to really having an effective game is how uh, the players interact with each other. So it's, it's truly a team sport. Um, the other thing is um, strategies like how you call plays. Um, often people try to beat the game by placing extra people on the line or moving your, your guy here or there. And uh, the computer's smart. It knows that. And it does stuff to counter you. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. For a while, the best sports simulations were found on dedicated video game consoles, but now some of the smoothest action, the best gameplay, can be found on the PC platform. And one of the best current examples is the new NBA Full Court Press from Microsoft. And I really love this game, Rob. The animation, the movement is so smooth. The sounds are great. You can hear the squealing of the sneakers on the wooden floor. Mm -hmm. Show us how you set up to play a game here. Okay, right now we're in the team selection screen where you can scroll through and see the logos of all the NBA teams we've got in here. We've got all the home courts of each of the teams as well. So depending on who you choose as your home team, that's the court you'll play so you on. So pick the teams, pick the courts. Can you pick right. the players to go on these teams? Yes, absolutely. You can change and make trades and so forth. We're going to play an all-star game between the Eastern and Western Conference All-Stars. And you can see this is our coaching screen. Mm -hmm. And if we want to put in Hakeem Olajuwon for David Robinson, I can just drag him over and double-click on him to see his stats. Uh -huh. There's also a playbook with over 100 different NBA plays. And, and are can, these real plays from real teams? These are real plays. We work with an NBA scout to tell us what the real plays are that are used in the NBA, like the three down shake and the five up and the transition. So this is an action game in which you really control the players, but you can actually coach by calling plays for your team. Yes, it's got that kind of depth if you want it. And you can call them out on the fly by just hitting a key on your keyboard. And these particular players, they're playing based on their stats. They have a particular set of skills which are unique to who they really are, yes. right, in the NBA. Based on real stats and ratings based on their ability to hit mm -hmm. a shot from 20 feet out or their dunking ability or their yeah. Speed or quickness. Or right, quickly have a rule screen here too. We can set up kind of you know how strict you're going to be with the reference on and, mm -hmm. and control that stuff, right? Absolutely. And you can you know turn on different options. What what type of officiating you'd like? Whether you'd like an easy game or a tough yeah. game. And that's, that's in there for different types of gamers. The action is so smooth here. Did you use the motion capture technology we looked at before? Yes, we did. We motion captured a real basketball player doing over 250 moves. And you can really see it in, in all the dunks and the dribbling yeah. and, the, and the steals. All right, so here we go. Tell us what you're doing and how you control the players. Like, like what player are you? Well, I'm the team in the white here, and you'll see that I've got a purple circle around the, the player that I will be controlling. You can choose to play any, any one position, or you can choose to always have the ball. Okay. Now you'll see that I'm controlling the team in the white. And it looks like I don't have the ball. You're on defense here. Mm -hmm. well, we got it now. All right, now explain how you do this. I mean, how do you decide when to shoot and pass okay. and fake and stuff well, like that? Well, you want to take shots when you're, when you're open and you want to drive in there. There's a turbo button that'll give you a little burst of speed. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to get in there. Hey, score. Get in there for a dunk. The announcer you hear is Kevin Calabro. Uh -huh. He's the radio voice of the Seattle, Seattle Supersonics. Or right, what can you do on uh, on defense? Can you block a shot and can sure. you get a rebound? You can you can switch which player you're controlling and go closer to the ball. Get in there for the shot as well. Hey, you're doing well here. Mm -hmm. Four zip, huh? Well, I've got it set on easy mode, <laughs> <laughs> so I can go in here and try and steal. Up the floor, See, that action is so smooth. 
we're playing at a resolution of 800 by 600, which gives you really sharp action. And another thing you'll see is the coaching bar that shows you who's got the ball and their, their stats right. for in the game. All right, now, you can play this by yourself against the computer, you can play against another player, and you can play it on a modem or in a network, right? That's correct. We can play up to four players on this game. Okay, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. NBA Full Court Press. Mm -hmm. Rob, thank you. Yeah. Well, it's no secret that there are a ton of websites and online sources for getting late sports information, even stat updates for your sports software. Here's Giles to tell you about a couple of websites that will keep you on top of your favorite game. Thanks, sir. Now, whether you've got an online service like America Online or just have a direct internet connection, if you're looking for sports information, you're all set. Well, now, let's start with America Online here. As you might suspect, you can click on the Sports Channel button here to bring up uh, AOL's sports section where they have all sorts of information about pro football, pro basketball, baseball, etc. Uh, you can find stats here, but I think more interesting online, if you're interested in fantasy leagues, is their cyber sports simulation leagues. Here you can uh, play in a, a, a fantasy league for everything from basketball and baseball down to hockey, wrestling, golf, and auto racing. Now, uh, you can play and follow your favorite teams, players, competitors, etc. Now, if you have a direct connection to the Internet and you want to find sports stats, come to Espinet Sports Zone. And if your particular sport is in season, you'll be able to find out uh, what the scores are, what's happening that very day, everything from the NFL to the NBA to the NHL and on, as well as having a, a lot of uh, sports stories to read as well. Now, if you play computer games, uh, sports computer games on your computer, you definitely want to check out the Computer Sports Edge. Now, this is a relatively new site. They're growing, but it's worth following because here they have everything from product reviews to strategy and tips. They also have uh, industry news as well as connections and links to sports leagues on the web. Now, last but not least, if your sport is not represented by something I've shown so far, you definitely want to come check out YPN's uh, Net Sports area, and this specifically, their Sports Cyberpedia, where they have listings of every different sport you can think of and lots of links to those different sports as well as write-ups about what you might find there. Thanks, Giles. Time now for our weekly summary of the latest Internet and PC news. Here's Lori Anderson with this week's Random Access Report. In the random access file this week, plagued by overload problems and angry customers, America Online has increased the amount of money it planned to spend to fix their network problems. The online service will now spend $350 million to upgrade its network. That's $100 million over what was previously planned. The money will be used to purchase new modems and build a new data center to handle the busy user traffic. Microsoft launched the latest version of its Office program, Microsoft Office 97. The software includes new versions of its component applications, as well as new Internet technologies that make it simple to publish on the web. The product launch includes a 30-city tour that started in New York City. On hand for the event was Microsoft Chairman and CEO Bill Gates, as well as NBC's Bob Costas. PC manufacturer the Acer Group will become a major source of components for Mac OS compatible computer systems. They plan to supply motherboards and other major components worldwide. They will be an OEM supplier to Apple as well as other third-party Macintosh clone makers. Holding the honors for most U.S. patents for the fourth year in a row, IBM obtained over 1,800 patents. Some of their inventions include searching the web by image, color, and pattern, protecting high-quality art on the Internet from unauthorized duplication by adding a visible watermark, and adding a similar IBM watermark to video discs to prevent pirating digital video movies. Lakeside School, a private prep school in the Seattle area, will receive a big boost from a few of its well-known alumni, Bill Gates and Paul Allen, who were both introduced to computers at the school, have joined the McCaw family in giving Lakeside as much as $30 million. They will match gifts from other alumni on a two to one dollar basis up to $30 million. The grant is part of a campaign to raise money for construction at the school. And finally, here's a sign of our times. The works of Shakespeare, Chaucer, and Jane Austen have been removed from the shelves of the British Council in Hong Kong. There is said to be a lack of demand for these classics because no one had borrowed them in the past year. So they've been replaced by video and computer terminals for surfing the net. That's it for this week's news. Back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. 
One sport we didn't get to cover during the show was hockey, and there is a great new hockey game out there for the PC called NHL 97. This is kind of like the hockey version of NBA Full Court Press, which we saw before. It's got incredibly smooth action, excellent player control, a simple interface, and access to real-world league and player stats. The gaming magazines have generally called it the best hockey game out there, even better than the ones for the dedicated game consoles like PlayStation and Saturn. It's just a great all-around sports simulation game. It's called NHL 97 from EA Sports. That's a division of Electronic Arts. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more of the best in computers, CD-ROM software, and the Internet. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Hope to see you here next time. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside, the business magazine for the technology elite. To order a videotape of this program, call 1-800-916-PCTV. Please ask for tapes by show number and title. And for more help in keeping up with the fast-changing world of personal computing, order the Chaffee Letter. Each month, Stuart writes in detail about topics covered on Computer Chronicles and includes his commentaries on the technology that directly affects how you use your computer. To subscribe or for a free trial issue, call 1-800-916-PCTV. The Chaffee Letter, your solution to information overload. For more information on anything you've seen on today's program, check out our website at www.pctv.com.